Today on the Locked On Rockies podcast, we talk about one-year deals. What are our thoughts about them? Are they good things? Should you be worried? We also talk about money in general and offering contracts. Also, just a brief little thing from a tweet I saw that kind of put a little thing into perspective. All that today on Locked On Rockies. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast for the 18th day of November, a Thursday here on the Big Blue Marble. We are talking Rockies baseball all off season long because we are proudly part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. Like I said, In the open there to the show, today's podcast, we're going to talk one-year deals. My thoughts on one-year deals, because a couple of big one-year deals were signed. We talked a little bit about that as well earlier in the week, but I saw some more Twitter discourse and some things that I was interested in. And Oh, by the way, I'm Paul Holden. I am the host of the Locked on Rockies podcast. Thank you all so much. Uh, We are on YouTube now. You can follow us and uh, subscribe there. I just why I brought this up, why I made that tra- transition is because I just put on my little. Uh, oh, there's my co-host. You can kind of see my dog there as well. I'm still having fun with the YouTube thing. So come join us on YouTube at uh, uh, Locked on Rockies. And we are on Twitter at L.O. Rockies. And uh, yeah, so today on the show, let's talk about the one year deal. Two big one year deals uh, were signed this week uh, with Noah Syndergaard and Justin Verlander returning to Houston. And here's the deal, folks. Some people were worried about the money. Some people were worried about the age. I'm fine with the one year deal. I'm always fine with the one year deal. You know, it might be a lot of money, but let's start there. Folks, when players are signed to deals, when especially in baseball, no salary cap, it's not your money. Do you really care about that type of money? Yes, you have to factor that in, of course. If you are, uh, you know, if you're not the big market teams or whatever, and you do have to factor payroll, payroll does play a factor, of course. But it's also a really easy way for owners to get out of the way and, and, to, and to, to justify not taking steps that they could to make a team better. <coughs> Obviously. I mean, let's, let's, let's be real, folks. I mean, Dick Momfort has a lot of money. The Rockies generate money. A lot of people go to Coors Field. Whether they be Rockies fans or not, people will go to watch baseball. People travel to Denver to watch baseball. The All-Star Game was a smash. There was a reason why Denver was the first one and the the easiest pickup to go for the All-Star Game. It's because the money has been put into other things And then you justify it by saying, we are a small market team. We are a mid-market team. We're not going to get a big name free agent. Yet, we can completely, we can modify and update our ballpark on a more recent basis than a lot of other teams have. And build an apartment complex, who's he, what's it, whatever. And this is Dick Monfort, not the Rockies. This is Dick Monfort. But... We can't sign DJ LeMayhew. We can't go out and get big name free agents. We can't go out and get John Gray a little bit of extra money. B.S. It's a bunch of hooey, folks. These people have the money. Dick Monfort can get the money. Dick Monfort makes money. He just doesn't want to put all of the money he's making back into the team. At least in my opinion. And again, I'm just a podcast host. I'm, a, I'm low on the rung. I don't have access to the teams. You know, I'm not I'm not someone that that's and it's inside the clubhouse. I'm not you know, I'm not one of these beat reporters that has the relationship with these people that have talked to these people. But that's certainly what it seemed like as a fan. It's certainly what it seemed like as someone who's been a part of Rockies baseball fandom for 27 years. Okay, maybe a little less than that, because that would be my entire life. And I didn't really focus on things until a little bit later. But still. There's teams fighting to get a new stadium. There's teams possibly being relocated that are playoff teams. There's all this other stuff. But yet, Coors Field has always been a tip-top ballpark. It's been always been a tip-top experience to go. Not necessarily for the product on the field for the home team, but for the ballpark experience itself. 
So again, folks, the money's there. Dick Momfort could pay for free agents. Dick Momfort could offer Trevor Story the deal. They offered Nolan Arenado that money. And they certainly didn't hesitate to spend to send $50 million, 5-0, for your franchise player to play for someone else. So don't get caught up in the money. Don't get caught up in all of that hooey. That's just them being able to, to, to sneak in there and be able to implant something where you want to defend the rich guy for not spending more money. And folks, I just don't have a big patience for that. <laughs> Because the Rockies aren't in the same situation as other teams. The Rockies fill seats. The Rockies have TV deals. The Rockies have a local impact. The Rockies are not the Rays. They are not the A's. They are not the Orioles. They are not these other teams that are in situations that are much different. They are in this situation because the owner doesn't want to spend money on the team all the time. He wants to spend money on the experience. So when I look at the money, and yeah, you know what? The Rockies paid too much money to Ian Desmond and Daniel Murphy. They did. But I don't care about that. I care about the length of those deals for the commitment that you went on there. That's the point of what I wanted to bring, circle this all back to. I don't care about a high dollar amount one year deal because it makes sense you pay big and you know what if it doesn't work out bummer are the astros and the angels going to be able to be okay if that money gets spent for one year and those pitches don't work out in, in the business sense in the money sense yeah it's not gonna be the end of the world if they can't get out there and 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 make a deal or like for example if they're if the Angels or the Astros find themselves not in the playoff race, the Astros are not more likely, but the Angels, you could probably send Syndergaardner and at least get something back, a little package if he's pitching great, if he's pitching good. It's a lot of money if you cover the contract. That, that, that's what I'm saying. The Ian Desmond and Daniel Murphy contracts are frustrating because of the length of time and money associated with them. But it's mostly the length of time because that's what you're focusing on. Because you're committed to those players and that money for a long time. And when you see these players not perform and live up to that contract, that's where the issue is. Let's continue this conversation. Let's keep diving into this. This is a good one. But first, got to tell you about our friends at Bet Online. They are back and better than ever. A new web interface for the start of basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code LOCKED ON to receive your bonus. That's a 50% welcome bonus when you sign up at Bet Online today using the promo code LOCKED ON. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, there's baseball in there too, but it's the offseason. Favorite Vegas casino games and a whole lot more. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for. For the 2021 season, Bet Online is the fastest, folks. Yes, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. We're talking one year deals. We're talking money. We're talking a little bit of this and that today on the Locked On Rockies podcast because I just feel like. It, it kind of this this goes back into what I was going to save for the third segment, but I'll, I'll tie it in now. 2021 and 2022 should have been magical years of Rockies baseball. The blueprint was laid out. Pitching staff was actually crafted. There was offense. There was defense. There was players. But instead. Rewind the tape. Ian Desmond's not working out in that deal. So that deal still happens. Instead of offering Daniel Murphy a multi-year deal, offer him a one-year deal. Because that's all you needed to see from Daniel Murphy. That's it. That's it. What was his contract? So let's look that up real quick. Right, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, 
So Daniel Murphy signed a two-year deal for $24 million. Why two? Why do you need him for that second year? And he also after them the opt-out in there as well. There's just no reason when you're looking at why that second year. What's the point of that? When you're when you're when you're gonna do something like take a risk on players and, and see if they're gonna pan out at Coors Field, don't just do the one year deal. The risk is so much lower. The cost is so much lower. I am fine with the Astros seeing if Justin Verlander can throw more than two pitches in two years because they trust that player enough to, they don't, you don't pay that money in that one year deal because you don't trust that player. You don't go out and take a risk on a Daniel Murphy and Ian Desmond and throw all that money at them and all, and not the money, but the length, the length. Ian Desmond comes over and you're trying to figure out what he's going to do, but you offer him a five year, $70 million contract. Why? Why would you do that? Especially after he just signed an, when you look at his contracts, I'm on uh spotrack.com. He got so much money from the Rockies, more money than he's ever earned. Why? Why five years? It's, it's, it, it, again, I might seem like I'm going against myself from the first segment and, and, and focusing on the money, but I'm focusing on the length of time. And that goes hand in hand with the money. Of course, you want to offer them the, the, the chance. But did you really think, do the Rockies sit there and really look at what Ian, the production of Ian Desmond and think that's the guy for five years? We're going to hope to teach this guy how to play first base and commit to it for this amount of money for five years. You know what you avoid? Is the two years he doesn't play for the Rockies. You avoid signing the player that performed the worst. He was one of the worst performing players over the time that he did play with the Rockies. You could have avoided all of that by offering him a two-year deal, a one-year deal. I, You know what? And players have to be willing. And, and if you lose Ian Desmond, you can find another player. You could have found another first baseman. If he walks on you, he does. Of course, Ian Desmond is going to take a five-year, $70 million deal. He's locked up for five years. That's he's, it's great. I know the players want the years, and of course they want the money, but the years are important to them. But you have to make sure that you are going. If you're going to go all in and offer five years, that is five. I mean, five years is, is, is a good chunk of what they offered Nolan Arenado. The length of time of contracts is important, and the risk is bigger and bigger and bigger. On these players, like an Ian Desmond, we are trying to take an experiment where you're trying to figure something out. It is less risky to put him for a one year deal. So, you know what? Because if the Angels, if Noah Syndergaard pans out for the Angels, that is huge. That is massive. That's a big name that he hasn't been the injuries there. And, you know, of course, that's something you have to, that, that's, that's a factor. That's what you have to worry about. That's, of course. But folks, if it pans out, great. And if it doesn't, it's a one-year deal. Boom, you're done. You don't have to deal with it. It's over. And you, the fan, didn't spend a single dollar. Yes, you're, you're, you're the impact of it, of watching the game or your team's performance. Yes, that's a factor. Yes, that is real. Yes, that's part of why you're watching. That's why you're a fan. But. In the big picture of sports fandom, you have down years. You have disappointing signings. You have all that. And the Angels are no stranger to that. <laughs> I mean, look at their situation. It's been frustrating to be Rockies fans, but it's got to be frustrating to be Angels fans. But you got to be encouraged that they're willing to take a chance because if that chance pays off, that's great. That's a chance I'd, you know what? If the Rockies went out and offered that deal to Noah Syndergaard and they got him, I'd be pumped. Because why not? 
Why not see what happens for a year and then go from the year to year basis because players are going to have to realize that's going to be a route. And if I ran a team, you have to be a top, 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 top key part of my franchise for me to offer you more than three years. That's not to say that I don't want to bring people back. I think those contracts are, are also opportunities for players to make more money. If Noah Syndergaard goes out and throws a, you know, a good year and shows that he, you know, if he's healthy enough to get through the season and, you know, through their anal analysis and all that stuff, you can get two more years out of him. There you go. That's two more years of money. Two more years of opportunity and a lot of money, depending on your performance. I mean, Syndergaard and Verlander got some money. And if they got that already with only pitching very little in the last two years, that's great news. That's great news for you as a pitcher. Because if you can stay healthy and go out there and perform, you can get someone else to pay you more money and get another couple years. Without, on the team ends, having this worrisome commitment. I think Rockies fans would feel a lot better about th how things have gone down and how the situations panned out with these players like Ian Desmond and Daniel Murphy if the length wasn't there. Daniel Murphy is a, obviously a much shorter case, but Daniel Murphy could have been on the Rockies for three years. Three years! Three seasons in the competitive window. There's no reason the Rockies should have been in the positions that, that, that were so volatile for them in their competitive window. If they're going to go bargain shopping to bring people to play a position that they don't usually play, why wouldn't you instead just offer a one-year deal to someone trying to figure it out? Maybe get it into a little bit better of a first baseman market. I don't remember all the free agents down back then, but and, and we'll, we can dive into that another time. But that's my point, folks. That's my point. The one-year deal is okay because it lowers the risk. And if it pays off... And if it pay, you know, you might lose the player if he has a bounce back and he goes, sure. But you at least got the opportunity there. You know, it's not a sport. It's maybe not the best sports analogy or maybe it doesn't cross over. But, you know, Kawhi Leonard got the Raptors a title and then he left. Is that so bad? Because I don't I can't remember all the Kawhi deals. I can't remember if it was a trade that they did or if it was a. I think they did trade with the Spurs, right? That was the whole thing. And But again, I'm just saying a player can come in, have an impact for a year, and move on. And honestly, it's fine at the end of the day because if it makes a big impact and it helps the team get better, that's great. And especially if it ends in a championship. And that's what the Rockies were missing, was going after a player that they can get in the short term and help them go and get to that next level because they're too worried about the big, big picture all the time. The Rockies need more of a win-now mentality when their teams are good. And one-year deals help you do that. Not all the time. It's, a, it's, it's just something that you shouldn't always shun. All right, there's my that's, – that's my thoughts – on the one-year deal. Let's keep talking Rockies baseball. Let's grieve a little bit here in just a sec. Little pause for my network friends there here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making Rockies, uh, Locked On Rockies your first listen of the day. We are free and streaming everywhere. My whole point of this is is and as the Rockies continue to go forward is to take new approaches, take different looks and to capitalize on 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 competitive windows going in the future. What's really tough about last season and what's really tough about this season going forward is the loss of star players, the loss of these of these face of the franchises and the loss of the competitive window and it's a bummer because the Rockies had genuinely built a team that these two years were going to be the best. They really were. It's just kind of a bummer because it, it, it and, and I bring this up because of, of of the inevitable of what we knew. It's just it's just a bummer that the moves by the front office lead to a second offseason with a big name player, a leader of the team, and both statistically and in the locker room and off the field and, and all that stuff. 
is leaving the team in what was supposed to be an era of great Rockies baseball. So I'm just hoping that this, that these deals, this offseason, this new CBA, all these things might, and new front office for the Rockies might have them looking at the game differently and might having them look at their approach to contracts and things a little bit differently as well. Pay the players and commit to the players that you love and you know are going to be good, but it's okay to only go with one-year deals and see how it pans out for players as well. We don't need to offer them five. We don't need to offer them two years and a possible opt-in, opt-out on the third. It's okay to go out and offer a one-year deal for a player you want to figure something out with and see what's going to go on. And folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you for checking us out here. We are free and streaming on all your favorite streaming platforms. Go check out Locked on Bets for your second listen of the day. And follow us on YouTube at Locked on Rockies. Subscribe, I should say, on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at LO Rockies. Free and streaming on all your favorite streaming platforms. I'm Paul Holden. I'm at Paul Holden 33. And folks, until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked on Rockies podcast.